Hello, and welcome to this Microbiology Bio 203 video lecture from Chapter 21 of your OpenStax book, Skin and Eye Infections. I'm Mr. Kennedy, and I'll be your guide as we explore this topic together briefly. Learning outcomes for Chapter 21 include being able to describe the major skin infections caused by bacteria, viruses, fungus, helminths, and protozoa. We begin by looking at your skin as a physical barrier to infection. The skin is comprised of multiple layers of cells, organized into the epidermis and dermal layers. It is a physical barrier to foreign invaders as a result of all of these layers of cells and the protein keratin. The skin is a dry environment which discourages bacterial growth and houses a wide number of resident microbiota. The resident microbiota occupy niches that could potentially support the growth of pathogens. Through the secretion of sweat and sebum, salt and chemicals are used to discourage growth of pathogens. This graphic is meant to illustrate a few of the normal microbiota of the skin. Please take a moment to pause the video and familiarize yourself with just a few of these organisms. This graphic is an illustration of the skin lesions that are often found as a result of colonization by pathogens. These skin lesions will be mentioned as we move through a number of diseases that follow in this video. Here you see lesions ranging from crusts to cysts, pustules, and even ulcers. Bacterial infections of the skin. Bacterial infections of the skin can be caused by gram-positive organisms such as Staphylococcus and Streptococcus. Staph and Streptococcus invade the skin and can even go below the skin through wounds that form in the skin as the skin may be pierced or cut or in some way damaged through day-to-day -day activities. Staphylococcus aureus. Many staphylococci are common on the skin, including staph aureus. There are, however, pathogenic strains that can cause multiple infections, such as purulent skin infections, scalded skin syndrome, and even MRSA. There are multiple virulence factors associated with Staphylococcus aureus as seen here. The hemolysins, leukocytins, and toxins produced can cause a wide variety of symptoms for patients. This is an illustration of Staph aureus growing on mannitol salt auger. It metabolizes the mannitol in the plate and causes a color change. Streptococcal infections. Streptococcal infections include Streptococcus pyrogenes. There are multiple virulence factors associated with Streptococcus pyrogenes, such as Streptolysins, M proteins, and hyaluronidase. It can cause cellulitis, arrhythmia, and can lead to necrotizing fasciitis. Pseudomonas infections of the skin. Pseudomonas aeruginosa is a gram-negative aerobic organism commonly found in water and soil. It's a very opportunistic pathogen. It is often associated with burn infections, hot tub rashes, and otis externa. Acne. Acne is caused by clogged hair follicles by shed skin and sebum the hair follicle may be infected by Propanobacterium acnes. Cutaneous anthrax is caused by Bacillus anthracis, which is a gram-positive spore-forming rod. It is a zoonotic infection. The endospores can enter the skin through abrasions. Anthrax can also be inhaled and ingested and may lead to septicemia. Bacterial conjunctivitis is inflammation of the conjunctiva. It's most commonly associ associated with or caused by Haemophilus influenzae. It is very contagious, but usually resolves in a few days. 
Other bacterial infections include ophthalmia, which is caused by Neisseria gonorrhea, acquired after birth. This type of infection can be prevented with antibiotic drops. Inclusions of conjunctivitis can be caused by chlamydia. Trachoma, also caused by chlamydia, is the leading cause of blindness. And keratitis of the cornea. This table will provide you with a summary of the bacterial infections of the eye. Take a moment to pause the video to familiarize yourself and review each disease, pathogen, its signs and symptoms, and how it is transmitted and treated. Viral diseases of the skin. Viral diseases of the skin are often transmitted via the respiratory route. These viral diseases include warts from the papillomavirus, pox viruses, which cause smallpox, herpes viruses, measles, fifth disease, and roseola. This table provides you with a summary of the viral infections of the skin and eyes. Pause the video momentarily to familiarize yourself with the listed diseases, pathogens, signs and symptoms, mode of transmission, and treatment. Viral diseases of the eye. Viral conjunctivitis is caused by adenovirus and creates a much more watery discharge than its bacterial cousin. Herpes kerat keratitis is caused by HSV-1, which may spread to the eyes. Cutaneous mycoses. Tinnitus or ringworm, uh, also known as athlete's foot, is caused by dermatophytes. Trichophyton infects the hair, skin, and nails. Epidermophyton infects the skin and nails, and microsporum infects the hair and skin. These mycoses are all fungal infections, although a term such as ringworm might lead one to believe that this is a disease caused by a worm. Aspergillosis, also cutaneous mycosis, is caused by the mold aspergillus. In its primary infectious route, it enters the body through a break in the skin, often in hospitals. It can also infect through the respiratory route. Candidiasis. This is a cutaneous infection which can cause a rash in skin folds and can also affect nails. Sporotrichosis. This is a subcutaneous mycosis caused by sporothrix. It is often referred to as Rose Gardner's disease. Through small wounds, this organism or infection can reach the lymphatic system. This table will provide you with a summary of mycoses of the skin. Again, be sure to pause the video to review the disease, the pathogen, sign symptoms, transmission, and method of treatment. Acanthamoeba and Loa infections. Acanthamoeba are free living protozoan amoeba. They are common in soils and unchlorinated bodies of fresh water and can cause keratitis, which is an infection of the cornea that can lead to blindness. Loa Loa is African eye worm, a helminth that lives in subcutaneous tissue. This table will summarize the parasitic skin and eye infections. Again, pause the video momentarily to review the two listed diseases, the pathogens, their signs, symptoms, mode of transmission, and antimicrobial drugs that are used to treat them. This concludes our coverage of chapter 21 on skin and eye infections.